أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعن الدائم السرمدي الأبدي على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين we begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all praises be to Him. Everlasting and omniscient He is, and we send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household and our everlasting damnation and curses upon their enemies. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. And once again, we congratulate Sahib Al-Asri wa Zaman, the awaited Savior, our awaited Imam, on this auspicious occasion that marks the birth of Fatima al-Zahra alayha afdal salati wa atam salam Our Lady of Light, the transcendent maiden Fatima Peace and blessings be upon her In the previous episode, my dear brothers and sisters We discussed the importance of carrying a Islamic identity And we also discussed how important it is not to lose this identity and we also discussed how we were in this episode and the coming ones in the coming episodes how we will begin to look at the narrations in closer detail the narrations that of course speak about choosing blissful names and inshallah that is what we will do today and we have a couple of narrations and inshallah depending on the time we'll see how far we will get and we will begin with this first narration from the holy household and my dear brothers and sisters like i said and i, I did recheck the reference of course these narrations if you wish to find a more detailed account on all of these narrations and of those who are able to read arabic they should go back to Wasa'ad al Shia of Al Hur al Amali and from volume 15 I have from page 122 we will begin these narrations and like I said this chapter or this volume in it you will find a very detailed account from how we are supposed to name our children what names are we to give our children what names are we not to give our children the merits of giving such names, which are the best names, and so on and so forth. A very detailed account on the names of the infallibles, the names, sorry, the, method, the methodology in which we are to name our children. So the first narration I have here, which is reported by Sheikh Al-Kulaini in his Kafi, as well as reported by Sheikh Al-Tusi, and it says, عن موسى بن بكر عن أبي الحسن عليه السلام قال أول أول ما يبر الرجل ولده أن يسميه باسم حسن فليحسن أحدكم اسم ولده or or, or for فليحسن أحدكم اسم ولده that might be the more correct way to read that sentence. So it says. That the first act of kindness from a father to his children is that he must that, that he must fulfill is to give his child a pleasant, embellishing, beautiful name. So as a father, my dear brothers and sisters, the Imams are telling us that the first act as a father, the first act of Kindness, the first act of generosity, the first act that a father should perform is that he must perfect his child's name. Give him a name that is beautiful, a name that is embellishing, a name that is blissful. Hence, the Imam says, make sure to give your children pleasant names. So then you'll see now how important it is that the name that you choose for your child is a name that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a name that and instead of a name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests another report as well is a report 
found in Al-Kafi again which is reported by Abi Abdullah alayhi salam and he says qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam istahsinu asma'akum fa innakum tad'unu biha yawm al-qiyamah qum ya fulan ibn fulan ila nurika wa qum ya fulan ibn fulan la nur lak this narration is a very interesting narration a very beautiful narration in a way let us translate this narration first the narration says, and it is recorded by Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, who, who reports this narration from his grandfather Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in which the Prophet says, perfect your name or your names, for you will be called by them on the day of judgment. The caller will call you and say, rise, O such and such, towards the lights. Rise, O such and such, for you there is no light. As in rise, O sun, or يعني, when, when we say Fulan ibn Fulan, it's a general call, meaning for example, say your name is Ahmed and your father's name is Muhammad, it would, the caller would say, rise, O Ahmed ibn Muhammad, O Ahmed son of Muhammad. So rise to your light and then rise, O Fulan of Fulan, for you there is no light. Now if we stop and if we contemplate upon this hadith, we can begin to realize many conclusions. First things first, we see that on the day of judgment, mankind will be called by their names. No matter who you are, no matter you're a Muslim, you're a non-Muslim, no matter what name you have, you will be called by your name and by your father's name. Fulan ibn Fulan. O son, Fulan, son of Fulan. That's how it's going to be on the Day of Judgment. Now imagine on the Day of Judgment when the angels begin calling out the names or the, this call. And imagine you're carrying a name such as Muhammad ibn Ahmad or Ali ibn Muhammad and so on and so forth. What kind of joy, just the name of, you, you will see later on, just the name of Ali and Muhammad bring joy to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his angels towards the house that carries the name of Muhammad and Ali. So we can say that there is perks carrying the name Muhammad and Ali or any other name that is associated with beauty. And of course the top of these names are the names of Ali Muhammad alayhum salam. They are names that are directly sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one who named Muhammad, was the one who named Ali, was the one who named Fatima, Hassan and Hussein, and so on and so forth. So you see how important it is to the point where Allah says, rise towards the light. And you rise, for you there is no light. We can say maybe that the person, for example, who is rising towards no light may be the person who used to carry either a name of an individual who used to carry enmity towards Ahlul Bayt or a person who had a name that was so detestful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his name alone could have brought him down to the depths of hell of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not judge people based on their names because their actions the actions of man play a role in everything because everything is we are we are all judged by our actions of course just because my name is Ali does not mean that on the day of judgment I will be given a special status or my name is Muhammad but it is still blissful to have these names but my point is for example the person who has a name that is not considered a beautiful name or a name that is not considered a name loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, he may carry the name of the person who played the hand in murdering Fatum to Zahra alayhi salam. He may carry the name, for example, of Umar or the name of Abu Bakr or any other name that is detested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A name like Khalid, for example, which in our narration say it's one of the names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. These 
names who had a hand in murdering the Lady of Light, Her Majesty Fatima the Zahra alayhi salam, who had the audacity to raise a sword on the house of Ali and Fatima alayhi salam. Of course, if this person is ignorant in the matter and does not know and has no knowledge, then of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not judge him. But imagine if this person grew up and he was he received the hujjah, the proof, about these individuals, these historic figures that cause Al Muhammad so much pain and suffering. And then he still with audacity said, you know what? I will never change my name. I'm proud to carry such a name, a name of the killer of Fatima alayhi salam. Now I only imagine what kind of maqam does this person have on the Day of Judgment? Only God knows. And I, and I say this especially for the people who may have, may have such names who are slowly coming into tashtashayyu into to be very careful that such names I I don't think that you should keep them. You know, I'd rather have a name, a Western name, than have a name such as... I mean, it's, it's difficult to even mention these names because these names, they bring pain to the heart of the Shi'i. They bring pain to the heart of he who is a lover of Fatima al-Zara And our problem is a problem of truth and falsehood. Everything we present is because we have zealousy towards what happened to our Lady Fatima alayhi salam. And we support the truth. Wherever haq may lie, wherever the truth may lie, we support truth. We support those names that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the heavens. Instead of the names of al Jift al-Taghut, which are the names that were sent by the demons from down below. Which is why it's important that we make sure that we are naming, when we're naming our children, we give them the best of names. And inshallah we'll see, we'll see what happens to Satan himself when the names of Ali and Muhammad are mentioned in the household. And what happens to Satan when these names of, of, of these demonic characters see I don't use their names, not because I am scared of anybody. No, I don't use their names because the Imams tell us that such names cause Satan to be happy. It cause Satan to strut in happiness. And you will see, we have some narrations from the Imams that say such names of the enemies of Al-Muhammad. So no matter who you are, if you are considered, if you are labeled as an enemy of Al-Muhammad then you are considered amongst those which in when, when, this, when this name is mentioned, you will only bring happiness to the shaitan's heart. But instead, when we mention the name of Ali and Muhammad, when we say Hassan Hussein, when we say Fatima, Ruqayya, and so on and so forth, the names of the Imams, السلام, it only brings forth pain towards Satan. And the hadith says it makes Satan dissolve like lead dissolves. And we will see in the narrations, inshallah, that are forthcoming bi idnillah ta'ala. So that is the second narration. The next narration that we have, and this narration, you will see what I mean by choosing an appropriate name for your children. You see, for example, let me give you a hypothetical. You have somebody that played a hand in murdering your father. Let's call this person X. This person, X dies. Generations to come, one of your grandchildren names his son by the killer of your forefathers. What kind of pain would that bring you? What kind of pain would that bring your forefathers? It would bring you immense pain. You would not today, for example, begin to call, or, would, or for example, do you see anybody today, especially those in the Gulf region, those who were dealt pain by the hands of Saddam Hussein, correct or no? Those who were dealt pain by Saddam, 
Do you see anybody today from amongst anybody today who was in, in their right mind would call their son Saddam unless they truly love Saddam and truly love the crimes of Saddam? No. Would you see anybody today come and take the name of Hitler and give the name of Hitler to his children when he knows that by Hitler's hand millions were killed? So this is the same ideology that we have, the same doctrine that we follow as Shia. We would not give our names, we would not give our children names of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. Especially when the person that we're speaking about here is a person who laid hands on Allah's most magnificent and perfect creation, the Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu And we will see from this narration here, this narration here is a narration that is narrated in Wasa'il al-Shia, again in volume 15, page 122. And, uh, and then you, if you go there, you will find all these narrations. So volume 15, page 122, hadith 27,376 of Wasa'il al-Shia. In case you don't have the version I do, if you follow the hadith number, you'll find this hadith. The hadith is narrated... And it says that the narrator is Ya'qub al-Sarraj. He says, دخلت على أبي عبد الله عليه السلام وهو واقف على رأس أبي الحسن موسى عليه السلام وهو في المهد يساره طويلا فجلست حتى فرغ فقمت إليه فقال ادن من مولاك فسلم فدنوت منه فسلمت فرد علي بكلام فصيح ثم قال اذهب فغير اسم ابنتك التي سميتها أمس فإنه اسم يبغضه الله وكانت ولدت لي ابنة فسميتها بالحميراء فقال أبو عبد الله عليه السلام أنت انتهى انتهي إلى أمره ترشد ترشد فغيرت اسمها translation now Picture this, Ya'qub al-Sirraj, he's entering upon his master, Abi Abdullah al-Sadiq. Imam al-Sadiq is standing by his son who was in his crib. And his son who? Imam al-Rida alayhi salam. Sorry, Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam. His son was in his crib. And Imam al-Sadiq is speaking to his son who is in his crib. After Imam al-Sadiq was finished speaking to his son, al-Kadhim alayhi salam, Imam al-Sadiq tells Ya'qub al-Sarraj, O Ya'qub, come close and send your greetings to your master. So Ya'qub al-Sarraj, amazed at this, he comes and he begins to speak to the young Qadim in his crib. Imam al-Qadim alayhi salam, the narrator says, Ya'qub, he began to respond to me in a most eloquent tongue. And he said to me, go home and change the name of your daughter that was recently born. Ya'qub al-Sarraj says, I was recently blessed with a newborn daughter and I called her Humayra. And then the Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says to Ya'qub al-Sarraj, while Ya'qub al-Sarraj is thinking about this, he says, go, follow the command of your master and you will find success. What does this mean? Who, we all know who, the, who, who Humayra's name is. We all know which what Humaira is and whose name Humaira was. Humaira was the name that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gave Aisha, which is something that nobody here argues about. According to this hadith that has been passed down by Imams, this is a name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests. Innuhu ismun Allah is angry with this name. To the point where Imam al kadhim alayhi salam, who was still in his crib, says to Ya'qub al-Sarraj, change the name of your daughter. So from this you see how important names are, to, uh, how important it is for a father to choose the correct name for his daughter and or son. Of course, we want to go into this narration into more detail, but our time is limited. For now, but we will have more episodes insha'Allah. But for now, we can say we'll conclude with this since we have discussed at least three narrations now. And insha'Allah, in the forthcoming episodes, we will first of all shed light more on this hadith 
and we have a couple of more hadith, inshallah, and then we will start going into the narrations which speak about the names of Muhammad and Ali and how the names of Muhammad and Ali bring forth only sadness towards Satan and how the names of the enemies of Muhammad and Ali bring forth happiness when they are when they are mentioned. So for this I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.